Jesus rebuked self-righteousness. He rebuked elitism. That's what racism is. It's elitism. It's the same thing. It's twisted and it's demonic. It's full of hatred. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Color. Are you kidding me? When this skin's removed, we're all the same. When your skin's removed, you're all the same. What does it matter what the outside looks like? Boy, let me tell you how much I've been through with the outside of this cup with people. Do you have any idea how angry dreads make people? It's so weird. It's hate. It's hatred. It's, it's, it's not just judgment. It's hate. It's, it's a problem. It's not a problem with this. It's a problem with this. I promise you. Because the way you see is completely dominated by the way you think. And as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So when this gets changed, this gets changed, and this gets changed. And this gets changed. Oh, gosh. This whole rioting thing is an eye for an eye. Tooth for a tooth. It's hatred in its finest. And hate isn't fine. The devil is loving it, man. There's a lot of Christians that have picked sides. <laughs> How many police officers have to lay their life down to continue the saga of one wrongful act? Because it's happening every day. It's, it's trauma, it's drama, and it needs to end. And if the body of Christ doesn't take a stand, you know how you take a stand in the body of Christ? Not by, this is our right. That's not how it is. No, you're in a theocracy, not a democracy. The king rules in a theocracy. This is how you take a stand in the body of Christ. Amen. Right here. We can't afford to enter into this thing, man. There are more people watching Facebook and watching CNN than reading their Bible. We are being filled with the thoughts of the world and filled with this wrong and this wrong and this wrong and this wrong and this wrong. Well, they did this and they said this and I can't believe they did this. We need to get back into the truth, man. How can we have community that becomes family if we're constantly more concerned about what other people are doing instead of what God's doing in here? Are you with me? I'm not justifying anything. I'm not siding with anything. I side with Jesus. Let no unwholesome word proceed out of your mouth, but that such a word that is good for edification according to the need of the moment so that it will give grace to those that hear. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ has also forgiven you. Let me know any of this that applies to any riot in existence and any protest in existence. None. There's not, there's none. There's nothing that fits into these guidelines, man. We've taken this into our own and we've said, we want rights. No, you don't want rights. You want righteousness. Do you know that people want justice, but justice without mercy is satanic? <laughs> justice without mercy is demonic. Justice and mercy have to be coupled together or else it's demonic strategy set up to rule this world like the, the prince and power of the air. We want that, we don't want that. Here, James 3. 
But if you have bitter jealousy or selfish ambition in your heart, do not be arrogant and so lie against the truth. This wisdom does not come from above, but it's earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder in every evil thing. But the wisdom from above is pure, peaceable, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy, good fruits, unwavering, and without hypocrisy. And the seed whose fruit is righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. I'm looking for people that want to actually make peace, not just keep the peace. Keeping the peace and making the peace. You are a peacemaker. You are not a peacekeeper. A peacemaker, you can come into the most hostile, most violent situation, and because the Prince of Peace dwells inside of you, you can release the presence of God. Jesus said, when you come into a house, release your peace there. You actually have the ability to come into a demonic situation and release the peace of God and fluster and freak out all of hell in every situation. You have the utter ability to change an atmosphere because of one person, because one person in Christ is the majority. I don't care how many devils there are. It can be a billion devils and one Christian. Silence to darkness because light has arrived. It's not this little light of mine. You are the light of the world. But if your light is partnering with darkness, you're no longer a light. You're a basket-headed Christian that's going along with others because it seems like the right thing to do. And racism is hatred, and it's, it's, total, it's totally demonic, man. I don't care what color. Jesus, keep, please keep this in your heart. When your skin is off, everybody's the same. Everyone in here looks the same. If we came in here filleted and no skin on, all of you look the same. Nothing's different. When you go down into a heart of, of somebody that's black, somebody that's white, somebody that's yellow, somebody that's red, When you go down into their heart, it's the same. It looks the same. So why would we get wrapped up in all that hatred, bitterness? We are not the world, we're the church, man. We're God's church. We're the hands and feet of Jesus. It's not okay to go another way. It's not okay to side with this or side with that. You better side with Jesus. Because if you don't side with Jesus, you're siding with the world period. If it's not Jesus, it's the world. It is or it's not. You're for him or you're against him. You gather or you scatter. There is no in between. There is no gray area. It doesn't matter. It's Jesus or it's not. It's God or the world. It's not anything else. Be very careful with your mind. Because your mind is something that's supposed to be renewed but we need to have clean filters. We need to be careful about what we watch. We need to be careful about what we eat because you are what you eat. And we can't afford to eat logic. We have to eat the gospel, man. We have to eat living bread. First Corinthians 12, 13 says, by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks or slaves or free. All have been all made to drink into one spirit. 1 John 2, 9 through 11. The one who says he's in the light and hates his brother is in the darkness till now. The one who loves his brother abides in the light and there's no cause for stumbling in him. We'll read that again. The one who loves his brother abides in the light. And there's no cause for stumbling. But the one who hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Hatred blinds your eyes. We can't afford to live in hatred. I promise this, you fall in love with God because what happens is in this case and all these different things, somebody's the victim. But in God, you're not a victim, you're victorious. It can be the worst thing ever that has been done to you. And if you get in front of most people, you will be the victim and they will be the enemy. But Jesus said, love your enemies. Totally different. 
Bless those that curse you and pray for those that despitefully use you. I'm talking gospel, man, Jesus. The be attitudes, the attitudes of your being. This is Jesus. If someone hates, he's actually a murderer. That's the gospel. People are like, well, I don't like that because that guy's wrong. I agree, he's wrong. Have you ever done anything wrong? How, I mean, how many of you have done something wrong? Let me see you show of hands. All right, why aren't you in hell? No, wait, let's just do this again. I mean, it's really technical. How many of you have messed up? How many of you did not get what you deserve? Why? When someone wronged you or someone wronged a family member or somebody wronged somebody that's close to you, why didn't you protest? (laughs) Wow, okay. Somebody really hurt somebody close to you. And I'm not saying it doesn't sting, but you better bring that thought captive immediately into obedience of Jesus. Because if you don't bring that thought captive, that thought will keep you, take you captive. And all of a sudden you will build a huge movement about your rights instead of righteousness and you will condemn your own self. Because you take yourself outside of the gospel and you're saying, I deserve whatever I get because I want them to get what they deserve. People are like, I don't like that. I really don't care what you like. I care what the truth is. I'm not, I'm not kidding. See, it's just not about siding with like. It's about preaching the truth. It's not about, the gospel's not up for negotiation. It's not up for negotiation. See, this kind of preaching stings. It does. It's called conviction. It's not condemnation. Because if you're in that place and the shoe fits, kick it off. It's not your shoe. But there is grace to change. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? It's just the gospel. Let me just go a little deeper. There's a couple more scriptures here. The Bible's full of them. (sighs) Watch, this is Ephesians 4, 29 to 32. I kind of talked about it a little bit earlier. All the things that we say, like, gosh, this is so crazy. The gossip the criticism, the complaining, the murmuring. Do you know who murmured and complained? We all know the children of Israel. They're in the wilderness, right? None of them got out of there. They all died right there. You with me? We don't want that. No. Okay, I'll leave that one because you talk about words to divide Christ and they get offended, they get hurt. Do you know life and death is in the power of your tongue? Like you can use it to speak life or you can use it to speak death? You can. Do you know that it says this? Listen to this. Let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but that which, but only such a word that is used for good, for edification, according to the need of the moment, so that it would provide grace to those that hear. That's what it says. Here's what God's saying. Providing grace. God has enabled all of us by our words to steward the grace and favor that's upon your life. So what I can do is I can choose who I want to steward God's favor to. Or I can choose who I want to steward death to. Life and death is in the power of a tongue. Jesus said, out of the heart the mouth speaks. So what we really need to do is we really need to encounter Jesus so that God takes out the heart and puts in a new heart. Jeremiah 24 says, in that day, I will give them a new heart. He didn't say he's going to revamp the old one. He didn't say he was going to fix it up. He said he was going to rip out that heart of stone and put in a heart of flesh. A heart of stone can't care for people. A heart of flesh does nothing but care for people. Are you with me? And out of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when your heart changes... It's not just a momentary change at the altar. It's a discipling change from the father speaking to you as a son, as a daughter, showing you his heart so that out of your heart comes his heart and your heart connection becomes one. So that the words that you speak provide life to them that hear you. So what God's saying is that we've become stewards of grace. And the stewardship of grace that God's given us is like a blank check. 
God will allow you to say, you have the favor of God on your life, and by the words of encouragement, and by you edifying and building something up, building someone up, you're targeting that person for gain, and you're actually saying, God, I have favor from you. I'm asking you to extend the favor that you have from me to them by the words that I speak. So God will enable us to, to be a steward of his grace and he will write the check that's been given to you blank in his name by your edification and encouragement. Now let's bring in gossip, criticism, complaining. What kind of stewardship is that? It's not grace. It's demonic strategy set up to get you to think like the devil who's not your father. Here's what happens. So now I go ahead and I speak some negative stuff to somebody or about somebody to a person whose conscience isn't really strong in the Lord. So what I've done is I've given them a different lens to see them through. So now, instead of you meeting, let's say you meet this guy right here. Stand up, please. All right. Awesome, man. So let's say, let's say you're going down the, you're, you're coming to church and you're coming to church here and, and you're having a great time and you meet this guy and he's in love with Jesus and she's in love with Jesus. They're radical. One way, Jesus, come on. They're radical. They love God. They just love Jesus. So now you meet them and they're like, man, they're cool people. But you walk out of here. Okay, thank you. But you walk out of here. I'm not going to use an example for this. This is a bad example. You meet somebody in the four, you're like, man, yeah, I just met this guy out front. He was really, really awesome. Oh, man, you better watch it because, man, like, I know him from another church. And, like, what he did over there wasn't, it, well, it wasn't good because he did this and he said this. And you don't even know for sure. You just were told that by somebody else. So now what you're doing is you're trying to protect somebody, but really what you're doing is you're giving that person a different lens to see him through. So now they can't see him through a lens of love. Now they through a lens of judgment. That plank thing. So now they're starting to see him. And instead of looking at somebody and saying, wow, I want to edify, encourage, and build them up. Now you've got this wrong thing in your filter that's causing you to see him wrong. And you might not even know it to be true. But someone else might come up to you and say, hey, how about that dude up there that's worshiping? Man, he's a wild one, right? Like, he really loves God. Oh, man, I don't know, man. Somebody told me that. So now all of a sudden you give two people the lenses. And that doesn't just stop with two because a lot of people can't keep their mouth shut. Sorry, but it's true. So now they want to talk to a lot of people just to inform them, to keep them safe. So what we do is we establish boundaries around ourselves to keep ourselves safe. And what you do is you encapsulate love. And instead of love flowing out of you like a river, you become a lake that like the Dead Sea We don't need that. We don't need it. Look, only a few people are clapping. Look, here's why. Because we've become so loose with what we say because it's the topic of conversation. And you ever hear that person, you ever hear the one in, in your life, if you don't have anything good to say, then don't say anything at all, right? Or the sticks and stones will break your bones, but words can never hurt you. Do you know that like there's some sayings that are, that are in the world, words can hurt and they cause all kinds of ruckus. You don't need to speak something about somebody to give them the wrong lens to see them through. So now all of a sudden, instead of, hey, now you go up to him and he's like, hey, man, I met you last week. How you doing? I'm good, man. Nice to see you. But really, you've got this look in your eye that's not the same as it was last week because you're looking through a plank and you can't even see him. Like if we get past that, that thing. And I'm not saying like if somebody causes trouble, I'm not saying it shouldn't be dealt with. But I'm saying like calling somebody and saying, hey, we need to pray for them after you gossip and say about 40 different things that are bad about them probably isn't prayer. Hey, did you hear what they did to me? Well, they did this and this and then they said, you know what? And then they did this too. You know what? We should just pray for them. (laughs) How about, hey man, let's pray for somebody. What happened? You know what? It doesn't really matter. What matters is that God shifts and changes their heart. Your war is not against flesh and blood. So why should I point out flesh and blood that your war is not a war, you're not at war at? Why should I point out flesh and blood to somebody? Listen, it doesn't take a man of God to point the trash out in someone's life. It really doesn't. It's pretty easy to spot. The world's professional at it. News lives by it. Are you with me? News lives by it. Good news doesn't. It doesn't take somebody that loves God to say, that person's messed up. 
It does take a man of God to say, I see something in there that's so valuable. And God is gonna bring that thing to the surface. And when he brings it to the surface, all that other stuff like dross is just gonna fly off. Why? Because that thing refined looks beautiful. And God is a refiner. And I love being in the fire, man. Why? Because it's the refiner's fire. And God shapes, molds, prunes, clips, and he wants the real you to step forward. He doesn't want the old you to even come into existence. He wants to kill the old you so the new you can come out. I'm serious, bright and shiny, and hey, Jesus loves you. You're amazing. Do you know God has a plan for your life? Do you know what it is? Oh, it's exciting.